Hi, how you doing? We're going to talk about standard form today. Uh, so standard form is of the form of any uh, equation that is written in the form of a, which is just the coefficient of x, so ax plus by is equal to c, where a and b are both coefficients of your variables, and c just stands for some particular value. What we need to take note of here is that the coefficient of x, which is a, cannot be negative, which means it can never be a negative number. And then the other part to this, the other part we definitely want to take hold of, is that a, b, and c cannot be fractions. So when I write this in standard form, it needs to be all whole number um, x uh, coefficients, and your c and b, it doesn't matter if they are positive or negative, but the a can't be negative. So let's take a look at a problem, and we'll start off with just what happens if a and b were fractions. So the problem I'm going to write up is, one third x plus two fifths y is equal to two. So I have this problem now that says one third x plus two fifths y equals two. So the problem here is, is that I have got a fraction for my coefficient of x and I have a fraction for my coefficient of y. So what I now need to do is I need to go through the process called clearing a fraction. And the way you clear fractions is by multiplying by their, the denominators of all your fractions' least common multiple. So the multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, uh, 18, 21, 24. So those are the types of things. If you notice, I'm just doing my times tables. <clears throat> I then also look at the other one where it's 5. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. There are multiple uh, answers for this possibility, but I'm just going to use the least common multiple of my fractions. And my fractions here are three, uh, my denominators are three and five. So the least common multiple is 15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this entire equation by 15. So I come over here and I write multiplying by 15. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this expression here in parentheses. So I've now got one third x plus two-fifths y, close the parentheses, is equal to, well, if I multiply this value by 15, I must multiply this value by 15, so I'm going to write 15 times 2. So now what I have here is 15 times 1 third. The, the way you need to think about a fraction is being a division property. So if I'm just multiplying fractions here, it's just, I can think about this as 15 divided by 3 is 5. Well, 5 times 1 is 5, so 1 third of 15 is Five, and it's also an x. So I've got 5x. Let me write that a little bit better. So 5x. I then come over here and plus. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. So this is 6y, and that is all equivalent to 30. So what I have here is now I've got a problem that is now in uh, standard form of a linear equation. So what I've got is my a is positive and everything is a whole value uh, number. So let's go on to a, another example. Let's talk about what happens if my a had been negative. So let me put up a new example here. A new example here is going to be negative 2 thirds x plus 3 fourths y is equivalent to 3 tenths. So here's my new problem where it says negative 2 thirds x plus 3 fourths y equals 3 tenths. Same idea with the fractions. We've talked about clearing a fraction before. And the way you clear a fraction is you look at the denominators of all of your fractions, not just the two with the coefficients. You look at it with all of them. So 3, 4, and 10. What is the smallest number that 3 4 and 10 go into. And you're going to find out that that number is going to be 60. So what I have to do is I have to go through and multiply all of these numbers down here by 60. So here we go. Again, I put it in parentheses. So I multiply by 60 and I get negative 2 thirds x plus 3 fourths y equals, so 60 times 3 tenths. Okay, so now I've got this problem, but before I go through and multiply, I want to take a look at something. And the thing I want to take a look at is that the coefficient of a, although being a fraction, it is also negative. And the only way you can make a negative positive is by multiplying it by another negative. So instead of multiplying by just positive 60, 
I'm going to multiply by negative 60 because then that's going to change this negative to being a positive. So that way I can satisfy the A can't be negative. So I multiply by negative 60. When I multiply by negative 60 over here, I've got to multiply by negative 60 over there. So here we go. So negative times a negative is positive. 2 thirds of 60 is 40x plus. So negative 60 times, now this is the thing we've got to be careful about. I wrote plus right away. But the positive and the negative is going to make this a minus. So what is negative 60 times positive 3 fourths? Well, how many times is 4 going to 60? Well, it goes into it 15 times. So 15 times 3 is 45. So I multiply this by 45, and that's now going to be my y. So that is equivalent to negative times a positive. The answer is going to be negative. How many times is 10 going to 60? 6 times. So now I need to go up here and just finish it. So 6 times 3 is 18. And there you have it. It is an expression that is now in standard form. These are all whole numbers. And A is not negative. So I now have an expression of 40x minus 45y is equal to negative 18. So for that, that's what we mean by putting it into a standard form of the equation of a line. It's not so much a function because a function, I know some of you know about this y equals mx plus b, but y equals mx plus b can't explain for every linear equation. It can only explain things for linear functions. So the linear equation, the difference between it, is that this will now be used for all linear equations. And we'll talk more about that at a later time.